The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this biology lesson for Lower Seed Science. I'm your Lower Seed Science teacher, Dama Charles Bobga. Before we go deeper into the lesson, we're going to flash back to see the assignment that you had in the last lesson. The assignment wanted you to identify and name the following foods, A, B, C. So we expect you to have looked at the, uh, examine and observe the photographs and then give, uh, identify and name them. Now, uh, the, uh, the A picture uh, re is related to a wheat product, a loaf of bread. Remember that the source material for the bread is either wheat, uh, is either wheat or any other cereal. Now the B, you see that the B is connected to a cassava product. That is the B. That's the B. That's the A, wheat product. B, cassava product. And then C is connected to uh, is connected to a maize product, corn fufu. These are staple food that we, we eat every day. So the assignment was um, easy. These are because they're staple foods that we eat every day. We're going to enter straight into our uh, lesson and it concerns the biochemistry of carbohydrates. We have already studied atoms, we have studied hydrogen, carbon, high, uh, oxygen. We have seen how they can integrate into the structure of carbohydrates, fats and proteins. But for today, we are not only going to look at proteins and fats, which is kept for subsequent lesson, but today will be our focus will be carbohydrate. So carbohydrates is our focus. And our lesson runs from objectives. What you are supposed to know uh, at the end of a lesson, what you're supposed to be able to achieve at the end of a lesson, it also requires that you build up from the old material, the previous lessons, and then you link them to this lesson. So if you have not been following the previous lessons, it is important that you go back to the lessons and then study the material before you see how they connect to this. Of course, there's our study of biology cannot be separated from real life situation. So you have to connect the knowledge of biological knowledge to your practical real life. I will give you a lot of activities and exercises and then I will give you an assignment that you will take home. For the objectives, at the end of the lesson, you're supposed to state and describe the composition of carbohydrates and explain the diversity of functions of this carbohydrate, the diversity of functions of these carbohydrates in living organism. State and describe the composition of carbohydrates, explain the diversity and, uh, of the functions of carbohydrates in living things. Of course, you're supposed to have learned about atoms and ions and how they interact together to build more complex uh, structures. The real life situation, most health problems result from too much of carbohydrates in our diet. That's the real life situation. Sometimes we just eat the carbohydrates and we don't know that it can bring us um, a health, health harm or health hazard. So that's our real life problem. We're going to examine the scientific problem then is that many health hazards result from the consumption of excess carbohydrates. I say excess because normal quantities of carbohydrates are needed by the body to generate energy to enter structures of the organism. But when it becomes excess, it is a problem. 
when it becomes excess, it is a problem. So health hazards, many health hazards are related to excess of carbohydrate consumption. Now we're going to run through this thing with a hypothesis in mind. And our hypothesis is that carbohydrate foods are abundant and cheap. That's the main hypothesis. The new hypothesis is that carbohydrate foods are very costly. We're going to see that the con a consumption of a consumer of carbohydrates is because they are cheap or because they are costly. We're going to determine that uh, by the time we come to the end of, of the lesson. So carbohydrate foods are abundant and cheap. New hypothesis, carbohydrate foods are very costly. Now the activity is simple. Amongst the food that are listed below, I want you to select the carbohydrate-based foods and separate them from the non-carbohydrate-based uh, non foods. Uh, there's bread, there is beans, there is milk, there is uh, popcorn, potatoes, spaghetti, soft drinks, corn, pie, cakes. This is a variety of foodstuffs that we meet every day. We eat every day. But we want to know by this activity whether you can speak out, select those that are carbohydrate-based and those that are non-carbohydrate-based. It's very important for our lesson. Now look at that table. On my left side, there are the foods that are carbohydrate-based. And on my right side, there are foods that are not carbohydrate, non-carbohydrate-based. Bread has a lot of carbohydrates. We saw already that bread is from a wheat source, from a grain source. So it is carbohydrate. We, also, we have seen also that popcorn is made from corn. And corn is a principal source of carbohydrate. Potatoes. The, the storage, uh, the, the tuber has a lot of carbohydrates. Spaghetti, of course, is made from cassava. And cassava, sometimes the cassava has a lot of carbohydrate. Soft drinks, a lot of the drinks that we drink and buy from supermarkets contain a lot of sugar. Of course, cakes are baked from flour. And flour come from cassava, flour come from potatoes, flour comes from a variety of carbohydrate sauce. On my left, we have the, the foods in that list that are not carbohydrate based. Beans is not carbohydrate based. Milk is not carbohydrate based. Fish is not carbohydrate based. I'm sure that there are many other foods. Meat is not carbohydrate based that you can add to that list. So these ones are in a category we call proteins. We're going to have time to study uh, the, the protein foods and their structure and function in later lessons. But today, we're focusing on those food items that we've separated bread, popcorn, potatoes, spaghetti, soft drinks, and cakes that constitute carbohydrate drinks, uh, carbohydrate food stuff. Now, there is a particular uh, activity that I want us to carry out now. And it concerns what they call glycemic index for some carbohydrate food. Now, glycemic index, we're going to see uh, the proper expansion of that, uh, that concept of glycemic index in this lesson. But we see glycemic, glycemic comes from uh, carbohydrate, it comes from sugar. So we've heard about the word hyperglycemia. It comes from there, excess sugar in the blood. Hypoglycemia, it comes from low sugar in the blood. For your blood to be normal, it means that there is normal glycemic level. So most of the food that we eat, they have different glycemic sugar, that's sugar levels in the foods. So you must know the kind of food that you are eating and you must be sure that you are not taking in excess carbohydrate. So we have the glycemic index. The index is just a, an indication, a chart that shows you which food has what uh, glycemic, uh, glycemic level. For example, glucose has the highest glycemic level. Glucose has the highest glycemic level of 100. So we, when you eat glucose every day, be sure that your glycemic, your glucose, your sugar content of the blood and tissue fluid will be very high. When you eat fructose, it is of the lowest level of, uh, of uh, lower level of sugar or low glycemic index, 23. So you see that uh, fructose is the lowest, glucose is the highest. And from orange, spaghetti, apple, slim milk, uh, uh, and um, fructose, their glycemic index is on the lower bottom. 
Now, when you're coming down, there is a decrease in glycemic level. And when you're going up, there's an increase in glycemic level. The food substances that are found at the middle area are, have a middle a sugar content. So we have high glycemic level, low glycemic level, and moderate or medium glycemic level. So you can be able to have a picture of the food you're eating. Am I eating a lot of carbohydrate? You will see from that chart of the glycemic level. Now, I want to introduce you to a scale, glycemic scale, that will help you to know the range of uh, uh, in a glycemic index that falls under low, medium, and high. We already saw sugar very high. We already saw uh, 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 fructose very low. So when the glycemic index ranges from 1 to 55, then we say it has a low glycemic index. So every food that is between 155 GI, uh, glycemic index, is low. Then anyone that is 70 and above is high, glycemic index. So the one that is in between these two zones is medium glycemic index. So what is our task now? Our task will be to look at that table, the previous table, uh, and select the foods with medium glycemic index and suggest a diet for a healthy toddler. I want to remind you that a toddler is a child between one and three, from one to three years, is a toddler, is a young child. And remember that toddlers do not need a lot of uh, foods with high glycemic level. Toddlers need food with high protein level because they need to build up their tissues. So we're going to go back to that table and look at uh, uh, the glycemic, uh, glycemic levels. So if we were to give, a, suggest a package of food that a toddler will feed, surely a toddler does not need high glucose. So it means that the toddler's food will be in the area of low glycemic index. For example, can, the toddler can drink orange juice, the toddler can eat spaghetti, the toddler can eat, um, can eat um, uh, apple juice, can drink apple juice, skim milk, of course their food is principal milk, and their daily food are principally fructose and low glycemic uh, uh, sugar foods. So this is the range. If you want to select any food for a toddler, it must be between the here right up to the brown rice because the low glycemic level is from zero uh, to 55. That's low glycemic uh, level. So let us see uh, the suggestion. Now, possible diet plan for a toddler. As I said before, a toddler is a child with, with age from one to three years old. That child does not, it needs more proteins for tissue build and growth. It doesn't need carbohydrate because it's not doing any strenuous work. So the meal uh, the, of that child must be with low glycemic level and more proteins uh, uh, appropriately. So the suggestion will be a, a meal from orange, as I already told you, from orange. Let's go back to that glycemic table. It will be a meal from orange right down there from brown rice right down to fructose so you can give the child food along this uh, index level low glycemic foods of course when you consider people of different occupations and different ages their demands and the glycemic uh, intake may be different so we're going to see that also the glycemic intake may be different so what suggestion will you uh, give for uh, somebody who is a carpenter, for example, a bricklayer, or a mechanic. There are people who need a lot of energy. Remember that glucose, carbohydrate, is the principal source of energy. So that person is permitted to eat food that has a high glycemic level because his body is going to burn off the sugar and to release the energy for his work. Somebody who is sedentary sitting down all the time like an office secretary may not need high glycemic food but remember that the brain even though she's sitting down or he's sitting down it has a lot of brain activity and there's a lot of energy needed for for brain activity so glycemic intake varies with age and occupation it varies with age and occupation so what is this glycemic 
index that we've been talking about. It is the measurement of how much a set of food has the potential to raise your blood sugar level. So it means that foods that have high glycemic index have the tendency to take you to a, 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 a zone of hyperglycemia. And remember that hyperglycemia is not good. If there is more sugar in your blood and your pancreas cannot change that sugar and remove it by oxidation or by storage or conversion to storage products, then you're going to suffer. If your, 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 your insulin production system is not functioning well, then it's not good for you to take foods with high glycemic level. Now, food with the high glycemic uh, index therefore contain more carbohydrates and can raise your blood sugar level easily. No doubt, uh, diabetics, those who are suffering from diabetics, are asked to keep away from sugar or they eat foods that have very low uh, glycemic index. So the glycemic index is a very important indicator. If you see somebody sick and you investigate the person's feeding habits, you may see that the person is feeding only on high or food with high glycemic indices. So it's very important that you, you consider that. So let us look at this activity. I was giving you a background information already about this activity. Let's look at it properly. What will you say about the GI for a bricklayer, a student, an office secretary? Now a bricklayer needs energy. So if it is if he's eating on food that has low glycemic index, then he will lack energy to do the job. So a bricklayer needs food with high glycemic index so that the, the carbohydrate intake will be available substrate for respiration to produce energy as ATP for his muscular work, for his uh, carrying up of heavy load. A student will need food of medium glycemic level. The student's activity is not as demanding as that of a bricklayer. The student and the office secretary may be in the same area. Remember that mental work demands a lot of uh, ATP. Remember that before imports are propagated, there is a sodium pump that needs a lot of ATP. Remember that ions are moving in the axonal membranes, even the membrane of the meninges, but against a concentration gradient by active transport. So even though the student and the office secretary are sitting down, listening to lecture, they need uh, foods with considerable level of, uh, of glycemic index. But it may not be at high glycemic level, it may be at a medium zone. Students and office secretaries, uh, they don't need too low uh, glycemic index or too high glycemic index uh, food. Now remember that when we take this uh, carbohydrate, we must be able to know the source of this carbohydrate. Just to remind you, you have heard about this many times, even before you were in the lower seed class, that carbohydrates are produced by a process called photosynthesis. Now, you see this is a green plant. The sunlight comes to the green plant, absorbed by the, by the leaves of the green plant, because the green plant contains a green pigment chlorophyll. Of course, you know that it is not uh, just simple chlorophyll, but it's chlorophyll complex of photosystems that are found in the grana of the chloroplast. It contains chlorophyll, absorbs light, and then it builds up sugar. It builds up sugar from carbon dioxide and water. And then the sugar can be broken down by digestion to produce glucose that can now influence your glycemic level. So plants produce the food and they absorb stuff with the, uh, the solar energy. Then we eat the food and the food is digested and the, the energy is, store, is still stored in glucose molecules and they are broken down in aerobic respiration. So this is a very important process. Carbon dioxide, water, sunlight, this is sugar. That is a factor that will, it will increase or decrease the glycemic level. And then oxygen is liberated as a byproduct. On the other way around, when this glucose combines with the oxygen, 
and it's going in the opposite direction, then it will break it down and release the energy that came from the sun for our use. So take note that the energy comes from the sun, stored in carbohydrates, and we can then use it. Um, so a, a somebody eating a lot of carbohydrates will get a lot of sugar and the glycemic index will be high. Somebody eating very low carbohydrate and then um, uh, low carbohydrate foods, the sugar level will be low. Remember that the process of digestion uh, is involved in the breakdown of the food that we get from plants. It's broken down through the elementary canal, the elementary canal, and then uh, release of the glucose. I already told you that there is an opposite process to photosynthesis. And this process is respiration. But before respiration, that sugar must be digested, that carbohydrate must be digested in the elementary canal, release the, the simple sugars, which are now broken step by step in the cell by respiration to release the energy that the carpenter needs, the student needs, and the secretary needs. So the interwoven processes. Now let's look at also that um, uh, the carbohydrate contains carbon and hydrogen in the ratio of um, uh, two is to one. Normally carbon hydrogen oxygen is one is to two is to one. That is the, the ratio. So you can now put the empirical uh, formula for carbohydrate as CH2O bracket N. So it gives you the ratio of carbon. So the proportions, there is double uh, amount of uh, hydrogen to the carbon. So uh, carbohydrates have carbon oxygen in proportions. Now carbohydrates also, carbohydrates, it means that it is carbon and water. So carbo comes from carbon and hydrogen comes from water. And it contains the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And the ratio, as I told you, one is to two is to one. What does that mean? There is twice as much hydrogen as, uh, as there is carbon and oxygen. So hydrogen is very important. Remember that we studied atoms to see how they're integrated into structures in living organisms. And we're now going to detail to see how carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are integrated into carbohydrate uh, structure. Also, uh, very important to note is that even though they have just carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, they combine in many ways, some simple and some complex, to form simple carbohydrates or complex carbohydrates. We have simple carbohydrates like sugar, glucose, fructose, galactose, they're simple sugars. Then they will combine to form uh, sucrose. That's now a bit more complex. But they combine severally again and arrange in different ways to form more complex carbohydrates like glycogen, like starch. So we're going to have an opportunity to look at structures of very simple sugars and we'll now look at structures of very complex sugars in our subsequent lesson. So remember that even though we have just three elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, they combine in different ways to form more complicated carbohydrates. Now, the simple carbohydrates, the simple carbohydrates, we're going to see that they have a special name called monosaccharides. And monosaccharides are simple sugars. And the number of carbon atoms vary. So when there are three, there are trios sugars. When there are four, there are tetrosis. When there are five, there are pentosis. And when they have six carbon in their structure, it becomes um, uh, a hexose. And these carbon atoms, as they increase, they have special functions in the organism. For example, most of the intermediates of respiratory breakdown of sugar are trial sugars. So we're going to see trial sugars. And from the trial sugars, we can form other necessary compounds in the body. And tetrosis. Uh, four carbon sugars, oxaloacetic acid is one of the examples we're going to meet in our study and it's very important in photosynthesis in C3 pathway. We're going to see pentose sugars that they enter into the structure of DNA 
and RNA. Deoxyribose and ribose sugars are very important in structure. So simple sugars enter into the structure of the living organism in various ways. Remember that all simple sugars are, 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 are sweet, are sweetened. Now, um, I told you that the simple sugars, we're going to give the name monosaccharides. So monosaccharides are simple sugars. And we're going to look at in detail the structure of glucose. We're going to see, so let's see the detail the structure of fructose, galactose. And we're going to see double sugars or disaccharides, which include uh, the table sugar and maltose and lactose. Now you have seen these sugars in digestion. When this glucose is digested, big molecules of glucose produce simple sugars, monosaccharides, disaccharides. Or it starts with disaccharides, then end up with monosaccharides that are absorbed in the intestinal lining and then used by the cell. So simple sugars and complex sugars are very important. But for this lesson, it's not time for us to study the structure. Subsequently, we're going to see. But now let's look at general functions of carbohydrates. Uh, carbohydrates are, in, are, are used as biofuels. Production of biological fuels uh, require carbohydrates. And these biofuels can come from uh, uh, remains of grass, remains of organic matter. They, they can be liquefied and, and, and the fuel derived from it and we call these fuels biofuels. So biofuels are very important uh, liquid fuels that are derived from carbohydrate material, from uh, uh, agricultural waste, from crop waste, from cow dung, etc, etc. So biofuels it's an important uh, function of carbohydrate production of biofuel. They are the raw materials for the production. Now, carbohydrates form the framework. In, in plants, carbohydrate that forms the framework is called cellulose. Cellulose forms the this, this framework in plants. Now, let me tell you that we saw solutions that are hypertonic. We saw solutions that are hypotonic, uh, 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 isotonic, and hypotonic. When a plant cell is placed in a hypotonic solution, water comes in. We're going to see that with the plants like Tradescantia. Water comes in. And when the water comes in, the vacuole is expanding. And the plant cell will not be destroyed because of the resistance formed by the cellular cell wall. The cellular cell walls are tough. And so they prevent the explosion of plant cells even though when, when water comes in by osmosis. So cellulosis are uh, important uh, carbohydrates that enter plant structures. Another one that enters a uh, structure are chitins, and chitins are carbohydrates that form fungal cell walls. We also have peptidoglycans that form the cell walls of bacteria and cyanobacteria. So there are diversity of uh, carbohydrates that form the framework for some living organisms. So carbohydrates also uh, function uh, requirement for uh, for um, uh, they, they are also used for a lot of cell activities. Uh, we already saw many of them. Uh, let us look at other functions of carbohydrates. We have agar. Agar is a carbohydrate that can be used to culture bacteria, to culture bacteria, and it can be used as a food source um, for other organisms. There is a cellulose that acts as roughage. Cellulose acts as roughage food in um, some organisms, and we also have um, other higher carbo carbohydrates like uh, uh, the uh, hyal hyaluronic uh, acid. Uh, they are also very important carbohydrates that enter into the structure and function of living organisms. Now, back to our real life situation. We said in our real life situation that most health problems which is also our, our, uh, our problem, uh, problem statement, that most health problems result from too much of carbohydrates in our diet. We have seen uh, the, the glycemic index. If you eat too much of carbohydrates, it increases your sugar level. If you eat too low of carbohydrates, it decreases your glycemic level, index level. But remember that this glycemic index level is linked to health conditions like diabetes. When your body has more sugar than you can handle, a condition we call hyperglycemia, then the person is developing diabetic condition. On the other hand, 
If the glycemic index is too low or the sugar level is very low, the person is developing diabetes. So whether the sugar is high or low is a diabetic condition. So the body now has a strategy to regulate and keep this uh, sugar level, the glycemic index level, at a level that is normal to the body. So that is very important. So uh, we can also link uh, this uh, uh, health problem of obesity to glycemic level index and level of sugar in the diet. Remember there was a problem that uh, when we did previous lessons, we saw the body mass index as, as, a, as a tool to determine the obesity level. When the ma body mass index was above 40, it was uh, grossly obese. Or when it was less than 15, it was normal. Between 20 and 25, it was obesity. So this obesity can come from the way we eat. Remember that we said that we eat too much of carbohydrates than other foodstuffs. So when you eat these foodstuffs and they cannot be used, they are stored in the body as adipose tissue. And then they bring you obesity. Remember that obesity has complications. It can, it can cause atherosclerosis. It can cause uh, 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 atherosclerosis, which is the hardening or thickening of the arteries. It can also bring about hypertension and it can also lead to diabetes. So these are complications that come with um, uh, inability uh, to, to handle the glucose. Our scientific uh, problem, many health hazards result from consumption of excess carbohydrates. I will tell you obesity is one of them, uh, diabetes is one of them, that the body has too much carbohydrate and the pancreas cannot respond to handle that large number of, carbo uh, of uh, carbohydrate, then you suffer from a condition called hyperglycemia and then you develop diabetes. So excess consumption of carbohydrates or above what the body can handle can now cause a health problem. Now I'll leave you with this assignment. How will you distinguish a simple sugar, monosaccharide, from other sugars? We're going to see this in the, our, next, um, our next lesson. And of course, I will always direct you to textbooks that you can consult. And we've come to the end of this lesson. And our next lesson will be still on biochemistry of carbohydrates too. Unna tege si ma tege yob, unna tege minga ma tege nyum, unna tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia jinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 